Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at some fun battles in the Open Ultra League featuring my newly built level 50 Rabombi. Rabombi has a really cool typing. It's a bug and fairy type Pokemon with the moveset of Fairy Wind, Bug Buzz, and Dazzling Gleam. Rabombi can struggle versus a lot due to the fact that it only has nuke moves. However, its ability to wall the most popular movesets from Metamons like Virizion, Steelix, and Dragonite made it of interest. This is not a Pokemon that I'd recommend for climbing, but with the right teammates, I was actually able to go positive and gain some elo with it. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches, and let's go Rabombi. We see the dream lead in the first match, Rabombi into Shadow Dragonite. Shadow Dragonites typically run Dragon Claw and Super Power, and their energy is completely walled as both moves are double resisted by Rabombi. The Galissapod save switch is going to be answered by Registeel. Opponent goes for the liquidation, and they do not get the debuff. That is quite nice. I'm returning fire with a Zap Cannon. Zap Cannon will be no shielded by the Galissapod, and Galissapod is going to be able to make it to another charge move, but I'm going to be able to tank this no problem and commit to the lock on farm down. Now I leave with energy. The Dragonite banks some energy, but they're going to have to throw a superpower if they want to get rid of the Registeel. Back in comes the Shadow Dragonite. Very nice counting from my opponent, going for the superpower just before I make it to the Zap Cannon. Superpower gets the KO. In comes Rabombi, and in the back, it's Tapu Fee. This is a bit of a core breaker now that Ready Steel is gone, but I'm able to connect with the Dazzling Gleam. That does big damage, and now I can just go straight for the Hydro Cannon. And at this point, I should have this game won. Hydro Cannon will be no shielded by my opponent on the CMP tie, and now I'm just going to commit to the Mudshot Farm Down. If my opponent makes it to another Surf, that's perfectly fine. At this point, all I want to do is just avoid the Dragonite getting a massive energy lead by farming down the Swampert. So the Surf is going to get the KO, but now I can send in Ribombi, and back in comes the Dragonite. But Dragonite, its energy is double resisted here. They can't really do anything. I'm going for the Bug Buzz, fishing for a defense drop, and I get the defense drop. So now I should be able to go for the two shield flex. Dragon Claw or Super Power, it's not going to matter. Both are double resisted. Ribombi fairy wins down the Shadow Dragonite, and that's a good game. We see a great lead in the next match, Rabombi into Verizian. Verizian farming up energy. We see a safe switch into Giratina, and they are core broken by the bee. Going straight for the Dazzling Gleam. That nearly one-shots the Giratina. I farm up to the potential Shadow Sneak for the opponent, and then switch into Registeel. And it turns out they actually don't have Shadow Sneak. They're running Ancient Power, so that proves to be a massive catch. And now, I'm just going to commit to the lock on farm down. I will go over 100 energy, but that's fine by me. I just want to exit this matchup with 100 energy so I can use it to threaten the Verizian. Dragon Claw, not going to be doing a whole lot. Even though I am going to let an entire double kick through, I will just fire the Focus Blast since I'm already at 100 energy. Focus Blast will connect onto the Verizian. Verizian continues to farm. Verizian will not be able to get a KO here with their Sacred Sword. Sacred Sword is going to connect. Registeel able to hang on and make it to the Focus Blast. If they want to keep this Verizian, they're going to have to shield. That is absolutely terrific. And now I can send in Ribombi. My opponent has a lot of energy here. In case they have Stone Edge, I'll shield, but they do not. They end up going for a Sacred Sword in the back is Swampert, and here I make a mistake. I shouldn't have thrown this energy. What I should have done is just bring in my Swampert immediately, as now I've wasted a lot of energy with my opponent shielding that move. And now it's the Swampert Mirror. I'm up a shield, but I'm behind on energy. I noticed actually after doing these battles that I was running my old Swampert. I did build a new Swampert that has a much higher rank, but unfortunately I forgot to put it into the lineup, so I am using an old Swampert here that as you can see has really poor IVs for the Ultra League. Hydro Cannon will get the KO, in comes Verizian. Verizian cannot afford to take a Hydro, so they're forced to fire off their energy. Leaf Blade will connect, and now it's all up to Rebombi. Rebombi, not a tanky Pokemon whatsoever, but is going to be single resist in the Leaf Blades here. Opponent goes for the Leaf Blade. Rabombi! Oh no! They make it to the Leaf Blade. Can Rabombi hang on? Leaf Blade does not KO. Rabombi able to hang on. Make it to the Bug Buzz. Bug Buzz massive overkill onto the Verizian. And that's a good game. We see a very tough lead in the next match, Rabombi into Jellicent. 
Basically, if it's a type neutral matchup, Ribombi is not going to have a good time. I'm going to farm up and switch into the Ready Steel as my opponent fires off the Shadow Ball. Opponent now going to send in Shadow Charizard. Charizard is, of course, going to be able to outpace, and I'm just going to let this through. Charizard is a pretty big problem for both the Ready Steel and the Ribombi, so I don't mind seeing this here, as now I can safely bring in the Swampert. Swampert going for the Hydro Cannon. As soon as I get it, opponent is going to let that go, because in the back, they have a hard counter for the Swampert. In comes Shadow Dragonite. But the good news is, is this is looking kind of okay for Ribombi. My opponent is going to fire off their energy here, but this will not KO, and now I have a Ribombi up energy, which hopefully can do quite well. In comes the Jellicent, and I'm firing off the Dazzling Gleam as soon as I see the switch. Dazzling Gleam will connect. I continue to farm up with the Ribombi. Opponent is going to throw their charge move, but they throw on alignment, giving me a fairy win for free. They are going to go for the Surf, and now I can go for the Bug Buzz. I'm fishing for a potential defense drop with the Bug Buzz. Bug Buzz is shielded, and I actually get the defense drop. That is pretty nice. I'm going to be shielding here as they do have enough for the Shadow Ball. Opponent full sends the Shadow Ball. Oh my goodness. I'm farming up and I'm going for the Bug Buzz. If they shield, I'm going to be switching into the Swampert. I can either make it to the Hydro or force them to switch out. In comes the Swampert. Opponent sends back in the Dragonite, but I'm able to make the Hydro Cannon. And this is big. This should put it into farm down range for Ribombi. Ribombi has taken a lot of damage this battle, but guess what? Dragonite is completely helpless here. Everything they throw is double resisted. Ribombi tanks it like it's nothing, makes it to the Dazzling Gleam, taking down the Jellicent, and that's a good game. We see a great lead in the next match, Ribombi into Obstagoon. Opponent is going to immediately save switch into a Alolan Muck, and I respond with Ready Steel. Both of my back two Pokemon do very, very well into Poison types, but I wanted to send in the Ready Steel here, because hopefully I can exit this matchup with energy, and a Focus Blast should be enough to threaten a shield from the Obstagoon. I'm going to fire off the Zap Cannon that will connect. Unfortunately, I do not get the debuff onto my opponent's Alolan Muck. They're firing off Dark Pulse after Dark Pulse. The Ready Steel is very, very bulky, able to withstand that damage. I'm farming up, and now I am going to go for a slight undercharge on the Zap Cannon. The goal is, I want to try and leave them in farm down range for lock-ons, and I do get the farm down. That is massive. Now with the energy lead, I'm able to outpace the Obstagoon, get to the Focus Blast. This will one-shot, so the opponent is forced to burn a shield. They will exit this matchup with a lot of energy, but I can send in Ribombi, and this is not enough for a potential Hyper Beam or Gunk Shot. My opponent is going to fire off the Night Slash. What do they have in the back? They have Jellicent, and this could get a bit tricky. I'm now wishing that I had sent in the Swampert to the Alolan Muck, as having Registeel would be really nice in this endgame. My opponent does not bait, so getting that shield correct is a big first step. I fire off the Earthquake. Earthquake is going to connect, and I continue to farm up with the Swampert. Swampert is going to be hit with another move from the Jellicent. I let this through. It is another Shadow Ball, but I am able to withstand that damage. I'm farming up, and I know that a Hydro will not KO, so I am going to be firing off this Earthquake. Earthquake is going to connect. In comes the Obstagoon. Obstagoon firing off energy, so they are not wanting me to make it to a move on the Swampert. And the Obstagoon boosts! Oh no, this is an absolute nightmare, as even though I do resist the moves, Ribombi is very frail. Bug Buzz gets shielded, gets the defense drop though. Oh my goodness, I have to live this. They're at the back-to-back. -back. I know shield. Night Slash barely does not KO, and I should be able to get this win, as I can now shield the Night Slash, go for the Bug Buzz, and Bug Buzz will deal massive super effective damage, taking down the boosted Obstagoon, and securing the win. Moving into the next match, we see a very tough lead, Ribombi into Clefable. Clefable has Meteor Mash, which will hit for massive super effective damage. I farm up to the potential Meteor Mash, try and go for a catch onto the Ready Steel, but my opponent shows great patience, holding onto their energy, and my Ready Steel save switch is answered with Swampert. This is really unfortunate. The goal of the team is to try and bait out a Verizian, as Ready Steel with a small energy lead can typically force a shield or switch advantage in the zeros, but versus a Swampert, I'm not able to do either. A Swamp makes the Earthquake plus the Hydro Cannon before I make two Focus Blasts, as long as they aren't too slow on the switch. Now I can send in Ribombi, throw four Fairy Winds, and go for the CMP tie, but unfortunately, that Clefable's lurking, and it has a lot of energy. I throw one Fairy Wind to switch into the Swampert and catch what should be the Meteor Mash. Hopefully, this catch can allow me to win. In the back, let's see what they have. They're farming up with the Clefable. It's Galissapod. I'm completely walled, and I resign the match. 
We see a tricky lead in the next match, Rebombi and Toxicroak. Even though Counter is double resisted here, Sludge Bomb hits for massive super effective damage. Opponent banks some energy, they're gonna save switch into Wall Rain, and I'm very happy to see Wall Rain on the save switch, as now I can align it to my only Wall Rain counter on the team, Registeel. I'm farming up and going for the Zap Cannon. Zap Cannon does not one shot here, but it will do quite a lot of damage. Zap Cannon connects. Again, we do not see an attack drop, which is unfortunate. My opponent is going to be firing off another move. I'm just going to let this go. Opponent ends up going for an Icicle Spear Bait, and that's going to allow me to make it to a Focus Blast. Focus Blast into the Wall Rain will be shielded, so my opponent really trying for Switch Advantage, but Switch Advantage doesn't matter to me here. Whether I have Ribombi or whether I have Swampert, I can do okay into the Toxic Croak. Honestly, I would prefer to see it on the Swampert, as that way, as opposed to on the Ribombi, at the very least, Toxic Croak can only hit for neutral. I get some energy on the Swampert. Opponent sends in the Toxicroak, and Toxicroak will fire off the Mud Bomb. I will commit the shield. The fact that they're bringing in Toxie into a ground type, they've got to be weak to Swampert somewhere in the back. I'm full sending the Earthquake here. Opponent commits the shield, and that seals it. They are definitely weak to Swampert in the back. I'm going to be shielding up here, and let's see. Is my opponent going to try and go for a catch? I wait a turn to make sure they can't. And this Earthquake will be lethal. What is that final Pokemon in the bag? It's a Registeel. And I should be in a good position here. As I'm only 7 Mud Shots away from the Earthquake. So I am able to outpace the Registeel by one singular turn. Earthquake connects. That does massive damage. They're forced to go for a 75 energy move Focus Blast to get the KO. And I can send in Ribombi. Ribombi. Honestly, I didn't think Dazzling Gleam would KO here. In hindsight, it absolutely would. But either way, we're going to get the Fairy Wind farm down of the Registeel and take the win. We see a Nightmare lead in the next match, Rebombi into Skeledurge. Skeledurge is a massive core breaker for the team. I save switch into Registeel as it has a slightly better matchup, and to my surprise, the opponent switches out of that winning matchup for them, and they send in Greedent. Greedent is not a reliable check to Registeel. If Greedent is up energy and gets lucky with crunch debuffs and avoiding Zap Cannon debuffs, Greedent does have the ability to flip the twos, but... If it's behind on energy, you can't really switch a Greedon into a Registeel, as Registeel is pretty reliably going to be able to take Switch. I'm going to fire off the Focus Blast. I already got the debuff on the first Zap Cannon. Opponent will commit the shield. They're continuing to farm up and spam out these crunches like crazy. Crunch is going to connect, and my defense does get lowered. I'm pretty low, but I am going to be committing the shield because winning switch advantage here is absolutely massive. I have to make sure that the Skeledurge gets aligned onto my Swampert, which will be able to handle it no problem. Focus Blast will connect, securing the KO. In comes Skeledurge, gets the Incinerate farm down. I send in Swampert, Swampert farming up energy. If they stay in, I can throw two Mud Shots in the Hydro Cannon. They go for the Disarming Voice. I throw two Mud Shots. The game lags, forces an overtap, and allows them to catch. And that is extremely frustrating. I'm going to rebank the Hydro Cannon, catch onto Rebombi, but now I'm in a way worse position where the switch clocks are misaligned. I send in the Rebombi, as Rebombi, of course, is going to be able to wall this energy. They go for the Leaf Blade. I'm farming up with the Rebombi, and I'm going for the Bug Buzz. Bug Buzz is going to do quite a lot of neutral damage here. Bug Buzz plus a Fairy Wind will get the KO. Back in comes the Skeledurge, and this is going to be tough. Skeledurge is going to get a massive farm down here. I go for the Dazzling Gleam. They let it through. And at this point, they just have an insurmountable energy lead. My only hope is trying to call a Shadow Ball. Sorry, trying to call a Disarming Voice. But they go for the Shadow Ball. And unfortunately, we lose the game. Hopping into the final match, looking for a bit of redemption. And what a lead to do so. As I lead Ribombi into Cresselia. Ribombi is able to win the zeros, even if the Cresselia is running Future Sight. Bug Buzz hits for massive damage onto the Cresselia. And I know that whatever they throw here, I can tank it. I know Shield, it is going to be the Future Sight, but I will be able to outpace. Making it to the Bug Buzz, but the opponent makes a beautiful catch, which is extra impressive because who knows Rebombi counts. Very well done there by my opponent. The nice thing is, is this is going to put it into Zap Cannon range for the Ready Steel. Ideally, I would like to go for an Undercharge and get a little bit of farm if possible. So I'm going to farm up, go for an Undercharge on the Ready Steel. Unfortunately, I don't Undercharge enough, and the Zap Cannon is going to get the KO, and in comes 
Swampert. Swampert, farm it up. I will be able to still make it to a Focus Blast before they make it to an Earthquake. Focus Blast is going to be shielded up by the Swampert. I continue to farm with the Ready Steel. I'm out of Hydro Cannon range, so my opponent will have to go for the Earthquake. Earthquake connects, getting the KO. I still have the Rabombi in the back with very low HP to use as a potential catch. I know my opponent needs two moves here, so I can very comfortably no shield the first. I continue to farm up with my Swampert opponent, firing off the Hydro, and I will commit the shield. I need to start putting pressure on my opponent. I have over back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons, so let's start using them. I'm going for Hydro Cannon number one. That's going to connect onto the Swampert, and I'm going for Hydro Cannon number two. My opponent, they're very close to their next move. One mud shot, the switch, and the catch onto Rabombi. And with that, unless I make a serious mistake, the game is won. I send in the Swampert. Opponent sends in Cresselia. Cresselia has a move banked, but this is perfectly fine. I can just shield, make sure that I farm up to the back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons, and from here, this is just winning. Hydro Cannon number one will secure the KO onto Cresselia. Back in comes the opponent Swampert. They do not have a move, but even if they did, as I mentioned, I'm running my pretty poor ranked Swampert, so it does have a high attack stat, so odds are I could probably win the CMP tie. All in all, I had a lot of fun getting to run Ribambi. I did choose to run it with some very strong meta teammates, as Ribambi in its good matchups, can do pretty well, but if it's a type neutral matchup or a type disadvantage matchup, it is really, really tough. So having some strong meta teammates was very helpful. I was able to go, I think, 11 and 8 with it, or 12 and 8, and I was able to climb back up to 2950, so I had some pretty fun sets with it. Ideally, if I could run the team again, I would switch out Swampert for XL Unova Stunfisk, as Stunfisk has a lot of the same cover to Swampert, but importantly, it doesn't get walled by Galissapod, which is a bit of an issue for this team. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.